is harmonious with love and truth. So, let's just draw that little equation up on our... If we want to have joy or happiness in our life, we, we must discover our desire... This is the proviso that we want to make sure it's harmonious with love and truth. Then we want to act upon it. And if we do all of that, we will have Joy. So you could say joy equals discovering your desire plus acting, making sure it's harmonious with love and truth and then acting upon it. If we add those three together, joy will result in our lives. Let's write another equation. Equals Discovering desire plus being disharmonious with love and truth and acting upon it. Can you see it's almost the same equation? with one primary difference. And the primary difference is the harmony with divine love and truth. So, if we look at this aspect of joy and we look at this aspect of pain, we see that God automatically created a feedback system. Do you understand what I mean by a feedback system? Well, in electronics, the feedback system is used to stop things from going into squealing at you. So, for example, you know the sound system here. This sound system has a thing called a phase lock loop amplifier, which is getting my voice and putting it into an electronic signal. And what it does with my signal is it amplifies my signal, but to stop the signal from being amplified so much that it blows up the amplifier... There's a feedback system there that makes sure that it's kept within a certain range. Does that make sense? And this is what God has done with our desire. God has given us a feedback system so that we can actually see where the ranges of our desire that is safe to us and the ranges of our desire that are unsafe to us. And the feedback system is joy and pain. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? So, when I'm feeling pain, my feedback system is telling me that there is something about my desire here that's out of harmony with love and truth. So, for example, quite often people come up and say to me, oh, we've just broken up for a relationship and I'm devastated. Right? I'm devastated that we've just broken up. And, you know, I want them to be with me but they don't want me. And I feel really devastated. So devastation, would you classify it as a joy or a pain? Okay, so we've got pain. So we know we're in the pain. So straight away we know, because of the pain, that there must be something about a desire that's disharmonious with love and truth that I have that would cause me to feel this pain. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel the pain of this breakup. And people then say to me, that makes no sense to me at all. They say, if I loved them, of course I'm going to feel pain. And I say, well, no, no, that's not true at all because every time we have pain, we're doing something in disharmony with love and truth. That can't be true. If you love someone, it doesn't automatically result in pain. In fact, if you love somebody, whether they love you back or not, it should result in your pleasure. I don't know if we can have a mic down here. Um, well, how does that work when you have a desire to speak truth? Mm -hmm. um, so just say, uh, well, actually, last night I decided to speak truth to a, 
a guy that I've known for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I decided to tell him that I feel that he needs attention from me. Um, so that was my desire to be more honest with him. But then it resulted in me feeling, well, not, well, yes, sort of like pain in a way because I felt like, um, because he couldn't understand why I felt he was needy. And, um... So what we're saying is you tried this equation and what ended up was the pain equation for you. Yep. So the pain equation, you started with what you believed was a pure desire, desire to speak truth. Is that desire harmonious with love and truth? Yes, of course it is. And you acted upon it, did you not? Yes, and yet you still got pain. Is that just because I have um, an injury within me that I need to release? I'll tell you why it's happening. Okay. <laughs> that desire was a pure desire and it wasn't that desire that caused you the pain. Because this is the equation that always causes joy and you were in that equation. So the pain must be the result of another desire. (laughs) Now I wish I didn't ask this question. (laughs) Oh no. So what's the real desire that you felt the pain about? You you gave the clue in your statement. Oh, maybe that he misunderstood me. He misunderstood me. Yeah. He misunderstood me. So what was my desire? I wanted him to understand. Okay. (laughs) Him to understand. To understand. Now, is that desire harmonious with truth and love? No. Why? Because that's me having an expectation. Yes. And that was the cause of your pain. Can you see the difference? Yep. You see, a lot of times what we do with our emotions is we think we're in this equation, but the pain is telling us we're in a totally different equation. (laughs) Does that make sense to everyone? Lots of realisations happening here, so that's very good. (laughs) You see, a lot of times we want to tell ourselves that we're doing something with a pure desire. And a lot of times we do actually act upon a pure desire, but at the same time, we have another desire playing that ain't so pure. Right? And it's that desire that caused us the pain, not the truth desire. You see, and this is why the feedback system is very good because we can see I'm in pain. I must have had a desire that was out of harmony with truth and love. I need to discover it. I need to know what that desire was because if my desire was harmonious with truth and love, I wouldn't feel the pain of it by its expression. Does everyone get that? Yeah? So, you can start seeing now that oftentimes we tell ourselves we're in this equation, but the result is equaling pain, which is telling us automatically that we're not in that equation, we're in something else playing. If we have Mike over. Um, AJ, I find that this area is very tricky Mm -hmm. because um, for a good part of my life I thought I was in the first equation Mm -hmm. and certain desires that I would have I would act upon and to the best of my ability at the time Mm -hmm. I thought I was in harmony with love and truth Mm -hmm. and I'd act upon the desire and it wouldn't equal pain it would actually bring results okay it would bring positive results whether it was filling me up emotionally or producing results in the physical, but it was, I realized it was the pain was suppressed. Let's define pain. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm reverting back to my childhood now. All right, let's define pain. Pain is anything that causes you pain in your long-term future, in your short-term future, in your current state, in your physical body, in your spirit body, or in your soul. That's fairly comprehensive, isn't it? You see, what most of the time we do on the earth is we only look at the physical or immediate emotional benefits to what we do but we have very little consideration of the longer-term effects 
right? So let's. Uh, well, how did I just define pain? I can't remember. Uh, it's long term. That's right. Long term. Short term. Immediate. Physical. Emotional. Spiritual or soul or soul based pain. Now, many people say to me, oh, I'm doing everything in Mahami with love and truth all my life, and look, I've got cancer now. now that's, that's telling you pain is, in this case, we've got a physical pain. We are doing things out of harmony with love and truth. Whether we know it or not, it's immaterial. Like, I've got an ache in my leg. What's that? Some pain? Straight away, I'm out of harmony. Physical, so I know it. Emotional, what might be in a relationship? The relationship breaks up. Uh, I've been in a relationship for five years and I just found out he was cheating on me. We had such a happy relationship. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's not true. You know, that's what you'd like to believe for, for five years, obviously. But if he was cheating on you for five years, your relationship was completely fake. Right? And therefore, for five years, we've been experiencing pain that we've been ignoring. Because the truth is, if I was emotionally connected with this person, man or woman, I would know something's wrong, would I not? So therefore, I wasn't emotionally connected with them, and I was ignoring the emotional connection because I'm ignoring my emotional pain and sooner or later some other pain occurs and that shows me that I was in ignorance in the, in the end. So sooner or later pain will come to my life if I'm in a state of disharmony with something. You can measure it immediately only if you are in a completely open emotional state. Other than that you will never be able to measure the pain immediately. And in fact, the majority of times, you will even feel some of your pain is good. Because in the end, a lot of us have addictions. And we'll talk about addictions at another time for a full discussion. But the truth is that if I have an unhealed emotional addictions inside of myself, I am already in a state of pain. Can you see that? So if, let's say I'm alone and I've got no one in my life and the, my addiction is I've got to have someone in my life. I've got to have someone in my life. I've got to always have a man in my life or a woman in my life for me to be happy, let's say. Right? Now, if I just sat by myself in this state where I'm alone, I would be able to feel that pain if I'm honest with myself. Does that make sense? But most of us are not very honest with ourselves because we want to uh, avoid our pain. Right? And that's called denial, which is a totally different subject to what we're discussing about. Right? Denial is when we choose to avoid our pain in order to receive something. So if I'm in a state of denial, what I will do is I'll go out and enter a relationship that I think I desire. Is my de I think my desire is harmonious with love and truth even perhaps, but it's not because it, was, it began from an addiction, which if I had been sitting down by myself and just feeling, I would have felt it as pain. You see, a lot of the times what we do is we start to feel our pain and then what do we do with that? We want someone else to make it go away. And not just someone else. You know, why do you think alcohol abuse is such a big problem? Because we often choose something else or someone else to make our pain go away. Because the truth is, if you were in a state of bliss, do you think you'd want to go and take some ecstasy every night? Why would you want to do that if you're already in a state of bliss? Can you see, I'm exercising a desire, but the truth is, right before I exercise a desire, I'm not even allowing myself to feel my own pain yet. And if I exercise a desire, even if you're, I think it's harmonious with love and truth, and I'm starting from a position of pain, Things are not going to work out so good because I'm going to be exercising a desire that's disharmonious with love and truth. 
Because let's define disharmonious with love and truth. Every time I deny my own soul's emotions, I am in disharmony with love and truth. Right. So I can think that I'm living in passion and desire, but often not be living in passion and desire that's harmonious with love and truth. And quite often we can have exactly the same desire and yet one result in pain and the other in pleasure. And the reason why is if we begin the desire from a place of pain, we will always result in more pain. When I, let's, let me illustrate that. I might have a desire to give you the divine truth. Is that a pure desire or not? Well, it may not be. Because what's my intention? See, if my intention is to manipulate and control you for the rest of your life and make you dependent upon me, for a start, I'm not giving you divine truth anymore, am I? But if that was my desire, then the results are going to be pain, is it not? And yet I could say to you, I'm here giving this love and, and truth to you. Isn't this wonderful? Aren't I a wonderful person? It's so lovely. And, uh, and all of those kind of things. And you could even begin feeling that. And yet in the end, I might have an intention that's damaging. And if my intention is such that I want to exercise my desire for my personal gain in terms of my being glorified or whatever, then straight away my desire is out of harmony with love and truth. And that will result in pain for me. Can you see that? So, so we need to actually allow ourselves to examine our desire and see the difference between it being in harmony with love and truth and being out of harmony with love and truth. And sometimes we can be very, we can seduce ourselves. Do you know what it's like to be seduced? And some of you might have been sexually seduced in your life or seduced into a you know, business that eventually went bad or seduced into something, doing something, you know, that when you were a child, remember during your teenage years when you went out and did something that later on turned out to be pretty stupid and you felt pretty embarrassed about? Often we get seduced by peer pressure, do we not, into doing things? Well, in the end, what we really get seduced with is our own addiction. And every time we're seduced, we are not in a state of love and truth, and we're also not in a state of pure desire because we're just doing really what somebody else wanted us to do. And that's pointless on this path, isn't it? What you want to do is work out what you want to do and then do that. And if that's harmonious with love and truth, then you're going to experience the joy of acting upon that. And if that's disharmonious with love and truth, you're going to experience the sorrow that results from acting upon that. 